Welcome to the Master Dealmaker's Secrets Podcast. And now, here's sales growth strategist, John Lake. Welcome to Master Dealmaker's Secrets. I'm John Blake. This is episode 111. And today we are going to talk about a simple two-step process that you can use to generate referrals from your existing clients. So super excited to share that with you. But before we do that, if you have got leads that you've spoken to but haven't bought yet in your funnel and you want to convert more of those leads into paying clients, head over to johnblakeaudio.com where you can grab your audio training where I walk you through the exact strategy that you can use to double sales with your existing leads. This is hidden money. Well, it's not that hidden because for most businesses, it's actually sitting on the table. Um, This is the exact strategy that I teach my clients with uh, when they first start with me, it's the fastest way that I can that I can work with them to get a really, really fast ROI on their investment with me. So it is over at johnblakeaudio.com. What, not only will you get the audio training, what you'll also get is the PDF guide that's got the exact word for word scripts in terms of what to write in your emails, in terms of what to write, or in, in terms of what to say when you ring. Uh, in what, what to say if you get somebody's voicemail, exactly what it is to write and send and when to call over a 90-day period. It's all mapped out step by step and it will produce consistent results. And one of the best things about it is that you can teach somebody else in your business to do it. So uh, even, a, even a VA, you could teach a VA in the Philippines, pay them nine bucks <laughs> an hour and get them to use this and it would produce results for you. So... Head over to johnblakeaudio.com and grab that and I look forward to hearing your success story. Okay, so I wanted to give you something really simple, really simple strategy today. This is how to get referrals in two easy steps. So the the first step is what we need to do is we need to set the scene or, or, or set the stage, stage, so to speak. So one of the best ways to do that is if you've, so you know, obviously the people that you want to get referrals from are your better clients so the long-term clients the people that are the easiest to deal with the people that are, that are the least um, give you the least amount of grief and drama they are the ones that you would ideally love to refer some business to because birds of a feather flock together people that are of the same mindset uh, and the same philosophy on life and and if you want to get all woo woo they kind of vibrate at the same level they hang out together so the best way to frame that is to say, look, you know, we, uh, look, you know, I'm really, really enjoying working with you guys. I'm, you know, so stoked that you're getting great results, you know, with, with, with the product that we're providing you because, you know, footnote, if they weren't getting good results, they wouldn't be a good client. They probably wouldn't still be working with you. Um, and look, if, you know, quite frankly, if I had a magic wand and I could duplicate one client uh, 50 times, it would be you guys. So we really appreciate the business. And what we also realize is that birds of a feather flock together. So typically people like yourself will know people that are similar to them. And so what we would ideally love is if if there was anyone that you know that you think we should be talking to that we could potentially help in the same way that we've helped you, right? So that's the first part that, um, f- first part of the process. And then the second part is, and this is the bit where everybody kind of makes the mistake, is they say, do you know anyone, right? That's what the amateur does. What you want to do is you want to paint the picture of the type of client that that person would ideally be best to refer to you. Because I think it's the statistic is like 91% of clients say that they will refer but only nine or 10% actually do. And the reason why is because we don't ask, right? So the best way to do that is to actually paint the picture. So you could say, look, a really great client for me would be somebody, so if I was to do this for my own business, I could say, look, a really good client for me would be someone who typically has about 30 staff. They are investing quite a significant amount of money in advertising. They are talking to lots of prospective clients and they're sending out lots of proposals or quotes, but they aren't converting as many of those quotes as what they would ideally like to be. Typically, they've got a fairly high transaction size and they've got a, they've got a really decent margin in their product and they 
are looking to maximize their opportunities. They want to maximize the amount of the leads and the opportunities that they get into their business that convert into paying clients. And they are typically a business owner. They are typically in this type of industry. So for me at the moment, you know, one of the industries that I'm focused on at the moment is trades and construction. So anyone who's in trades and construction um, is, is a great client for me if they're, if they're investing in advertising, if they've got a, a team of a minimum of about 30. And they're doing somewhere in that sort of 5 million, you know, or, or it's anywhere probably about 450 per month, um, uh, you know, up to about probably, you know, 750, you know, that kind of thing. So that's, that, that's how you would paint the picture, right? So you want to paint, and this is obviously going to be different for you. I just basically gave you mine. And then the next question to ask is, so so as you think of the type of business owner that I've just described, who comes to mind? And and then you might you might expand, and you might say, look, they might be they might be vendors, you know, so they might be people that you're actually dealing with that provide you with products or services. They could be people from your network. They could be people. Uh, they could be past clients, they could be existing clients, they could be people that sell to you. And then be quiet, and in most cases, they'll come back to you and say, oh yeah, you know what, I reckon you should probably be talking to such and such. And then from there, you can say, oh, so, you know, what makes you say that? Oh, because I had a conversation with him last week, and you know, he was complaining because you know, he said that you know, at the moment he's you know, getting you know, really bashed around in terms of discounting and price and commoditization and da 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 and then you see, you know, who else comes to mind? And they go, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, the other guy, this, you know, probably this vendor that we deal with, you know, good business, but, you know, I reckon they could probably help with, need get some help with some sales and da-da-da. And so you could literally keep going, you know, on for quite some time and, and you might walk out with that conversation with maybe five or six different referrals. So it's a simple process. If you need to, just go back and rewind the podcast and listen to the dialogue because you can use it pretty much word for word. As I've said it, um, good luck with that. I hope you get some good referrals out of it. And uh, thank you for listening as always. And I will look forward to talking to you on the next podcast. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to Master Dealmaker's Secrets with John Blake. Subscribe to get more in-depth strategies to maximize your sales process with new episodes every week. And double your inquiry to sale conversion with the lead flow you already have. Go to johnblakeaudio.com for his exclusive free no-fluff audio training and companion PDF guide.